Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, great to have you here today. Oh, I swear, I, when I listen, okay. Every week I listen back to this video to see what we've done and to see what we might improve, etc. And I cannot believe how often I say, um, it is not okay. So I have set myself the goal of not saying, um, and I already did it within the first three seconds. So that's unfortunate. But we can only start where we are. So it's a do-over starting right now. Uh, it's happy, a challenge. It's a challenge. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We're glad to have everyone with us today, either live or later on, if you're watching later. It's a beautiful morning. The colors, I can even see them through the plastic in the windows of the church. So that's how vibrant they are. Yesterday, um, um, but they can only go every second week, so she's very, very sad. But we were there last week, anyhow, and while she was riding, since I couldn't watch, I went nearby in St. Lazare and found this little lake. There's this little tiny, itsy bitsy little lake, like des Dunes or something like that. And it's beautiful, and it has a little beach and everything. It was lovely, and you can walk all around it, and it takes like 12 minutes, so you feel really proud of yourself for walking all the way around the lake, and then you realize it only took you 12 minutes to do it. But I was walking around this lake yesterday, and you've all gone for walks. You know how easy it is to be outside in the beauty of nature. Yesterday was phenomenally gorgeous in the morning. It was 23 degrees. Annie and I walked outside in the morning. We were like, oh my goodness, it's so warm. And the colors are there. There was a, a, quite a lot of wind, so it was just, you could hear the leaves rustling. It was just beautiful. And it wasn't hard to be thankful yesterday morning. One of the, I, I keep talking about these mindfulness practices that I've been working on personally and also with my students. And one of the ones I've been doing for a number of weeks now, actually, maybe about a month off and on with the kids, there's, there are a lot of breathing exercises, as I've spoken of before, but there are other things too. It's not just about the breathing. And one of them is taking time to notice what's around you. And you do it through the five senses. You say, what can I see? around me and what can I then you say what can I hear you hold silence for a while and you say what can I hear and then I put touch third what can you feel and then fourth is what can you smell and fifth is what can you taste you know maybe you just had a mint or maybe you just had a lovely drink of water and your mouth feels fresh or or what have you um, in the, in, the, in the directions for the exercise, it says to do five things you see, and four things you hear, and three things you can touch, and two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. So some kids like that, the structure of that, the five, four, three, two, one, and they can use their hand to remind them, and we also have a breathing exercise with the hand, so it works really well. Um, but that's just if you're a teacher, so otherwise don't worry about it. But, um, <laughs> um, but it's surprising, it sounds very simple, but it's surprisingly, interesting to do and if you start to do it regularly i have found that you do see and hear and feel and smell and taste things differently and the idea of it is to be just aware of what your present moment is and to take that in and it reminds me of our discussions previously about it is well well sometimes it's not well but in one single moment if you look around you and listen and smell and hear and touch that moment might be well, and that might be enough for that, for that time. And so I was walking around this lake and thinking about my 54321 with my senses and how much fun it would be to take my kids outside and do something like that and go outside and do the 54321. Um, but I just, oh gosh, I said the um. um and again. And again, oi! <laughs> I would just like to invite you, I was thinking, oh, oh right, and then the whole point, Oh gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm a bit rambly this morning, but um, there's the um. I was thinking about the people who can get out, that was it. And how much time we do spend in the classroom, actually, um, we, we can go outside, but most of the time we're in the classroom, COVID or not COVID, and yet, even just in the classroom, we can see tons of things we didn't notice before and hear and touch and smell and taste. And I was thinking about all the people who can't get out right now. The people who, can, even in non-COVID times, there's people, of course, who can't get out, but it's even harder for a lot of people right now. And I think, even though it's hard, and not to deny the difficulty of that, 
because it is really difficult. I would invite you nonetheless, just wherever you are, whether it's in a room that you've been in all day, every day for the past six or seven months of quarantine-ish, um, I would invite you to try that, to look around you and say, what are five things that I can see and four that I can hear and three that I can touch? I'll talk about touch next time because otherwise this is too long um, and smell and maybe taste and dwell in that moment. And I hope that's helpful. It's been helpful for me. That's why I share it in the hopes that it's helpful for some of you. I'm going to play a piece of music. It's called Leaves Falling. Lord, for the promise of harvest contained within a seed, we thank you. For the oak tree within an acorn, the bread within a grain, the apple within a pip, the mystery of nature gift wrapped for us to sow, we thank you. And we sing. And we sing. Because it's Thanksgiving. Because it's Thanksgiving, we are going to sing, come ye thankful people come. And I know multiple people enjoy this song, but I know Walter really enjoys this song. And every Thanksgiving, he checks with me and makes sure that I'm going to play it. And he didn't check with me this year, <clears throat> so I hope you're okay, Walter. But I hope you know that this goes out to you particularly, to anyone else who enjoys it, but out to you particularly. Well, um, now you've, I'm just going to say that um, my great-granddad yes? was vicar in a place called Morbinstow on the Cornish coast. Really? Yes. Your mom or your dad? Uh, my mum's... My mum's... Grandpa? Granddad. Okay. Yeah. Yes, my grandma grew up in this, this vicarage on the, uh, and it really is right on the cliffs. Okay. And Walter is from Cornwall, he'll, he'll tell you that proudly. Okay. Uh, but that's where Harvest Festival was like reintroduced in the 18th, like just maybe two vicars before was the guy who was, um, Hawker I think his name was, who reintroduced Harvest and made sure all these songs were written. Really? So it's, so it's my granddad, great grand, great great granddad or whatever's fault. <laughs> That's too funny. You were like two vicars before. I like how in England you count time by vicars. <laughs> Four vicars ago, this is what we did. <laughs> the parish, the parish of Yoxall, yes. which where my where I grew up and where my parents are, and they've just got a new vicar, which is fantastic news. Good. There are on the wall. There is the list of ministers back to before 1066. We do not understand what history is over here in Canada. Those of us who have been here, born and raised here, parents also, you know, we do not understand the meaning of the word history. Right. When you can look at something on the wall that's been there for over a thousand years. That blows me away. I want to go there one day. Anywhere. I'd like to go anywhere right now. <laughs> Never mind. We're thankful for where we are. And we're going to sing, Come Ye Thankful People Come.
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Giving and forgiving God, you created the good earth and blessed it, gave us glad and generous hearts that we may rejoice and give thanks for the abundance of your creation, the depths of your mercy, and your care for all. Amen. Amen. And we confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On the sheet, the, the song sheet, which you'll find on the Facebook uh, page, just below the service if you, if you haven't already found it, no. um, I have put the psalm before the next song. That's okay. We're just going to sing the next song and then we're going to do the psalm after. Yeah. Yeah. Called How Can I Keep From Singing?
to print the service for myself this morning so fortunately we can use this telephone and find everything we need psalm is number 65 i like the first line very much silence is praise to you zion dwelling god and also obedience we hear the prayer in it all. We all arrive at your doorstep sooner or later, loaded with guilt. Our sins too much for us, but you get rid of them once and for all. Blessed are the chosen. Blessed the guest at home in your place. We expect our fill of good things in your house, your heavenly manse. All your salvation wonders are on display in your trophy room, earth tamer, Ocean pourer, mountain maker, hill dresser, muzzler of sea storm and wave crash of mobs in noisy riot. Far and wide, they'll come to a stop, they'll stare in awe, in wonder. Dawn and dusk take turns calling, come and worship. Oh, visit the earth, ask her to join the dance. Deck her out in spring showers, fill the God River with living water. Paint the wheat fields golden. Creation was made for this. Drench the plowed fields, soak the dirt clods with rainfall as harrow and rake bring her to blossom and fruit. Snow crown the peaks with splendor. Scatter rose petals down your paths. All through the wild meadows, rose petals. Set the hills to dancing. Dress the canyon walls with live sheep. It's a good idea. A drape of flax across the valleys. Let them shout and shout and shout. Let them sing. No, it's your turn. And the reading is from Corinthians. Yeah. That was really good, the song. It was really good. Actually, it would have kind of worked to do that right into the song, eh? Just be like, sing, 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 shout, 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 let them sing. How can I keep from singing? Anyways, never mind. It's okay. Two Corinthians. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. This most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Carrying out this social relief work involves far more than helping meet the bare needs of poor Christians. It also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgivings to God. This relief offering is a prod to live at your very best showing your gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters, and really towards everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagance of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession for whatever you need. Thank God for this gift, his gift. No language can praise it enough. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Okay. I'm going to risk saying one more thing today. Okay. I hope I'm not boring people. <laughs> but especially, oh gosh, um, especially just be, because in that reading, at the very beginning, it was um, God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. And 
And so I want to tell you what happened to me this week. Remember last week I said, I told everybody, because I was very sad, that my stove, my oven rather, broke down. Oh yes. I mentioned that um, at the end of the service, just apropos of nothing except for wanting some, some sympathy. Maybe it was a bit my sob story that I'm not supposed to have. Um, anyway, uh, so later that day I was uh, scrolling through Barrage, because that's what you do sometimes when you have nothing else to do and also when you're nesting in your new home, because it's a cheaper way to do it. Anyhow, I was scrolling through Barrage and I saw there somebody was selling an electric roaster for $30. And where, where it's a bit like, a, if you don't know what that is, it's a bit like a crock pot, but for like roasting. Um, I didn't even know this existed, actually. So uh, you could cook your turkey in there. So I said, wow, for $30, I can roast my turkey. And even though I can't have people for Thanksgiving, I can still make a nice Thanksgiving meal for my kids the way that they are used to. So I'm going to buy this turkey roaster or you can roast anything, but this turkey roaster from this lady. So I contacted her, blah, 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 and we set up a meeting. So Monday after school, Annie and I went, um, Annie and I went to pick up the roaster, and I spoke to the lovely lady, her name was Diane, and she told me how. She had just moved there, and she thought her oven wasn't gonna be big enough, but it turns out it is, so that's why she's selling it. And So I told her that I had just moved, and I was dismayed because my oven, anyways, I told her the whole story, and we were in our house for the, new, you know, for the first year, and everything else. And so it was a lovely exchange. And then I went home with my roaster, all happy. And about an hour later, I got a message uh, through Barrage. And the lady, Diana, is asking me, would you mind giving me your address, she says, because I've been thinking about your story, what you told me today, and it's just not sitting well with me to have taken your money for the roaster when you're just trying to give your kids a nice Thanksgiving in your new house, etc., etc." which was like astonishing and so lovely. And so I told Annie about it because she had been there with me and she was like, wow, that's amazing. She says, mommy, you're not really going to take the money back, are you? And I said, Annie, I think I will because, and this is why it made me really think of it this morning. I, now the phone is off so I can't look, but the, there was that line in the reading just now that you read, Richard, that was... Um, the gift, I wish I could find it, um, that the gift is in the giving or the gift. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. And sometimes we give a gift to somebody by receiving a gift. I think she was so happy to give us back that money and to support our first Thanksgiving in our new house. And we'll donate it next time at Metro when they're taking you know, food for the needy or whatever. But it was just a lovely moment, and so lovely to remember that there are people who are good in the world and kind and who want to do good for others, and how wonderful it is to do so, both for the giver and for the receiver. And we have to do both so that we give gifts to the givers by being receivers. And that is how I think we delight God as well. That was my point, actually, because we receive from him and it delights him. We are going to say, you have been good. Not like that.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. It happened that as he made his way towards Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, met him. They kept their distance but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. They went, and while still on their way, became clean. One of them, when he realised he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful, he couldn't thank him enough, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, we're not ten healed, where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? Then he said to him, get up, on your way, your faith has healed and saved you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The reflection's a muddle this morning. It's a muddle, uh oh. Yeah, because, uh, well, it's easy to forget actually, because it's just kind of cool coming and singing the songs and praying, and it, it's, it's really good, and like you tell that story, and that's a, it's a good story. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, I have a couple of good ones to share too like just little vignettes from the last week. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe the real lesson for me today is that it's, it's very different from, like my reading of the general mood, probably including mine, is, is there's a lot of fear about what's happening with the second wave and with COVID resurfacing and what the heck will happen. Yeah. And, and, and fear about um, that, well, we only got through it last time or this time whatever time because we could get outside and we could walk and now we know that it's not going to be very good weather going for the next six months and uh, and it's hard and and that there's that kind of there's a real fear and there's a hunkering down and it's actually quite stark contrast to to a theme of gratitude and and you know some of the stories of open-heartedness and and warm-heartedness and um and it's it's tricky and I was thinking of Thanksgiving that I said to someone this week, like, how do you feel about Thanksgiving? And she said, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I, it just doesn't feel like Thanksgiving. So, I mean, it looks like Thanksgiving. The, the, like you said, the leaves are there, the sunshine's there, the blue sky's there. It's that time of year. And, but yet, the, that, we kind of, there's a, you know, the, we just know we can't gather in the big numbers and you can't have the groaning tables and everything else. Um, so it's, it's, so it's, there's a bit of a contrast there. And um, the, the, the other bit that I, I think I've always started out uh, Thanksgiving, because I think I'd have done it a few times now with this, is, is for those who don't know, when I was a lad, uh, my Saturday job was on a farm. Mm -hmm. and, and actually in a village, in a village you know, harvest festival, which is, I guess, the equivalent in Britain to Thanksgiving here, is, it, it's a big deal at church. You know, there's um, really, really still, when I was a kid, all the farmers did still come in from the outlying farms and church was absolute probably the busiest it was for the entire year was on was on harvest festival and 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 i was thinking about that and about you know we are removed from the land and from 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 farming in in big cities and so on and and that's not always healthy but it's good to remember that food doesn't just magically appear there are people who work and toil um and on my saturday job uh, one what, what happens in the spring, actually, rather than the winter, is in the winter all the calves do, you know, they get born and they grow up inside because you, you don't want to make the fields too muddy and it's cold and it's wet and, and so on. But in the spring, they're all quite well-formed calves by now. They're big, bigger, <laughs> and, uh, bigger and more boisterous. And then you let them out into the field. And, for the first and time. For the first time. And they, there's like this pause at the start where they don't know what to do. Uh, and then they then they go absolutely crazy. Wow, and they, that must be amazing to watch. It it, it really is. Oh. It really is. Uh, Provided you don't get in the way. That's, that's <laughs> pretty, I should say. 
but, but it's amazing to watch. And there's actually a piece um, in Malachi. Walter will correct me if I'm wrong. Wow, Malachi. We, yes, we don't look at Malachi very often. But um, in Malachi, there's a bit that likens, likens it to be, you will be like calves set free from the store. Mm. Uh, so I kind of keep that image in my mind. And maybe I hold that image in my mind a bit today for, for Thanksgiving that... I also feel that, well, when I do meet people, I actually don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we're so kind of used to this, this piece, but there will come a time, hopefully, when we are like calves set free from a store and we can go and party again. That was beautiful. And it will be good. That was number one vignette. Yeah. Thank you. So the second is... Um, Well, the second, the second is um, really about how are we grateful and thankful in at the moment. And um, now I'm saying um, <laughs> and because it, 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 like I said, it, it's not straightforward. And I, I liked, I did like the bit, which was um, this relief offering is a prod to live at your very best. Uh, and I was thinking, because I was thinking, well, what does gratitude mean? And and well, in many ways, gratitude is, is spontaneous, like the guy who came, the one of the ten who came back, who, you know, he came back spontaneously and he threw himself at Jesus' feet. Um, there's also, as you were saying, there's, a, there's a, I think, an increased, re, I th I'm going to say re-understanding, because I think most of this stuff mm -hmm. was known before, but we're reminding ourselves of it, that actually you can consciously remind yourself of things that you're grateful for and thankful for. And I think we spoke about that a few weeks ago or a few months ago, and it, it, it's true that... Um, yeah. Apparently, if you smile, you do make yourself happier. <laughs> uh, the, the tail can wag the dog, uh, <laughs> and I and I think I think um, fake it till you make it. That's right. Sometimes and, that's and good. I think, and I think thinking of positively about gratitude and thankfulness is is part of that. I think you can make yourself more thankful and grateful by by that conscious practice. Yeah. But I, and I liked, but I did like also the bit about living your life at the best. And I started to wonder about well, what what is living your life at the best actually? Because I know, I know that at the moment. Um, Maybe not every day, but some days. Um, there are lots of folks, I, I might even class myself, for whom living at your best might be successfully managing to get yourself up, showered, cleaned, have a structure for the day, um, not implode, not succumb to numbing things of drugs or alcohol, um, have, have enough peace at night to get to sleep, despite maybe financial worries or work worries or, or other things. and 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 or dealing or just holding it together with either your kids or your elderly parents or both or being trapped in a relationship or a place or a house like like there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of maybe it was there anyway and it's just more visible in covid times because there's less escapes and there's maybe you're realizing or i'm realizing or one is realizing that the only way one was surviving was by getting out. Yeah, I think there um, must be a lot of that. People, people used to say about Derby, which is much nicer now than it was before, but people say, well, what's the good thing about living in Derby? Well, you can get out easily. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and, and I, I wonder how many lives are a bit like that, that we're realizing that, well, the, the reason life was tenable was because we could get out. Yeah. And, and now we can't. So I was thinking, well, what does, what does being, being at, my, at our best mean? And so the two little bits for that. The first is, um, I'm really lucky to have met two people re relatively recently, both from Venezuela. Wow. And uh, one in my French class and one just at, at work, both from work actually. And really, really fantastic folks. And, but then you listen to their stories about how they, Venezuela is just a disaster, mm. absolute disaster. And they, they fled, their, their families are scattered all over the place. Um, because of you know they went one went here to university because that was what worked one went there the parents went somewhere else the cousins went somewhere else and and it, it's really it, it it's terrible terrible but, but what really has amazed me about both of the the people I talked to is you know those the same well yeah we've got so many WhatsApp groups with different family groupings different groupings of friends like people are texting all the time people are constantly you know, in touch, looking after each other, caring for each other still. And we get together whenever we can, if it's possible. And, and, and in many senses, these are folks who've lost everything. They, they, they lost a life, a house, they've had to leave, they've had to flee sometimes. Um, so I was thinking, and like, I'm not saying we should all be like that, but I'm saying it was a great example of, of how really focusing on what's important can make a, a really big difference. 
yeah. and and like it inspired me truthfully. Mm. Um, and and then the other bit I think is well, I should have got you to play that REM song this morning as the uh, which one the um, hold on. Everybody oh, the hurts. everybody hurts. Because uh, I think my 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 excitation is if you're in that place where where just getting through the morning is a an achievement. Um, just just hang in there. That's that's my exhortation for today. Um, I, I can't tell you what's going to work, what isn't going to work. Uh, what I can say is that, um, that that sometimes that sometimes in the moment it can feel very very bad, and it and it is very very bad. I'm not going to belittle that. Uh, but when we when we step out and look over a larger period of time, things can look different. When, and I would encourage also reaching out and, and talking and just doing something to try and get out of the space a little bit. Um, like I said, I can't, I can't give a magic wand and say it's all going to be well if, mm -hmm. but I think just hold on to that thought that God wants you to be the best. He wants you to both receive and as a result of that receiving to give. And although it's really hard right now, um, uh, it, that's, I think, partly because COVID forces us to address at the same time everything that's going on, often with difficulties and withdrawing of network at the same time. So it's really tough. Yeah. So hold on. That's yeah. my excitation. And if you can, be grateful and find a few things to be grateful for or just find one thing to latch on, like I will make my bed every morning uh, by before, you know, straight away as I get up, you know, latch on to that. Just do one thing. Because it's, it's also easy with, well, I'm going to be the best I am. You know, there's all these pictures of happy, shiny people. And um, that's probably an REM song as well. Yeah, shiny, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there's, a, the, if, uh, you know, the, the kind of the stuff that's on YouTube and the, the picture of, you know, the beautifully focused pictures. Um, don't set your eyes on that. That's, that's, it's not realistic and it's probably not real. Just find a, find a couple of things to set your eyes upon. Sometimes just a glass of water and call one friend. I think that's... I a... think that's a great mantra yeah so and if you're not in that place um you could probably do with a glass of water and calling a friend too actually well <laughs> that, it, 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 that's that's very true and and also um come anyway because because um you're an example the, the venezuelan folks are an example you're you're an example i, I don't mean an example and i will copy i mean a. Uh, um a example is not the right word. A encouragement mm -hmm. and uh, and a solidity and uh, there's hope. Uh, there's a hope there that um, other people can get through things and come out the other side. So come and be part of it because the community is made up of of everyone, not not just those who are in a desperate place or those who are in a good place. It's it's mm -hmm. a mix and we have to help each other. Mm -hmm. So most of us are a mix just inside ourselves anyway. That, well, that's it, because sometimes um, one can be in place A on Tuesdays and Thursdays and place yeah. B on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, <laughs> yeah. or, or yeah, there's, there's definitely ups and downs in the world at the moment. Yeah. So I think there's some good stuff in today's reading about that and about ultimately, as you were saying, coming back and being grateful to God, because much of what we're grateful for does, doesn't come from us. It comes from the people around us. It comes from creation. It comes from the gifts that we've been given and maybe don't even know that we've been given. So reach out, come back to God, take a glass of water, call a friend, make your bed. <laughs> um, and we miss groaning tables today, but we can still yeah, be grateful. And we can. I think that's it. All right. Amen. Amen. But it's a good song that's next, I think. I'm back on now, yeah. Yeah, I, that would have been good to do, Ariane, but this is a good song too. Beautiful things.
Can you play it while we pray? I can play while we pray. Go ahead. Let's pray. Lord, we offer you our we offer you our thanks. We pray for that we'll be in a place where we can have the stillness to be able to give thanks to you. Those things we see and hear and touch and taste. We offer you, we offer our thanks for food, for drink, for the memories of the past I've seen on Facebook. You know, so many people have posted pictures of last year's Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving a few years ago. Thank you for those reminders. We give thanks for creation too, for the leaves and the sun. And pray again that you'll give us that space to be able to remember and hear that. We pray today for all those who are struggling. Maybe not all the time, but some of the time. The stresses, and we offer them to you. pray for those who are in need of healing, all of us I suppose, but those who particularly need your touch today. We offer their names out louder in our hearts. And finally as we do week by week, thanks for those in the medical profession who are working hard to keep us safe. For those who are putting themselves at risk, cleaning, moving, teaching. We offer a prayer today for all those who are in the medical profession. Lord, for fruitfulness in its many forms, we give you thanks. For selfless love, grace, wisdom, knowledge, sacrifice, all who take that which you have given and make with it something of beauty. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
May the peace of God reign in this place and in all our places, and the love of God forever hold you tight. May the Spirit of God flow through your life, and the joy of God uphold you day and night, and the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I've lost my battery, so I can't see, but offer each other a sign of peace. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we sing. I, did, I had the wrong song, maybe. That's okay, we're ready. Peace to everybody however you may experience it this year. I, I did tell her it would, so I think, okay. I think we'll, we'll leave her. Okay. Go ahead. It's I have three notices. I do. Firstly, I um, this is the time of year when Walter comes in and says, get your Operation Christmas Child boxes and fill them up. Are we doing that? Is that happening? No, it's not happening this year because oh. uh, Walter, Walter's a bit housebound, so he can't get out. And, uh, and he's worried, I think, as well about just the whole COVID thing of moving boxes backwards and forwards and, and so on. And I, I think he's probably right. But he does ask, and I'll put it in the email next week, um, that if you would have done a box, and we did 44, historically, that's about our number, um, that he did say that if, if you would have done a box, maybe you could make a donation. And I'm going to put that in the email for next week. Okay, that's uh, really good. Which is, a, I think, is a really, I think that's good, a really idea. good idea. And honestly, I'm sad for Walter because I, I don't know when he started doing that, but I think it's been every year since I've been here. For oh my sure. gosh, he's been so faithful with that. Uh, worked so yeah. hard. So um, it, it really is a faithful and a good ministry as well, and it does, I think, bring a lot of joy to people's lives when they open a box of stuff um, and they might not have got one. So uh, yeah. that was the first one. <clears throat> uh, second one is um, I continue to figure out bingo. <laughs> I just say that for you. Third one is Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're going to have an online parish meeting. The Zoom was in the email. Uh, if you don't have Zoom or don't want to use Zoom, there is also a telephone number in the email that you can dial in. You don't have to do it through the internet. You can do it. At least you can listen. You won't be able to see other people and people's faces, but you can hear at least. Can you speak? And you can speak, awesome. I believe. Okay. That's really important. If any of you are, lots of people watch who are not like nearby. I saw Barbara dance was on before. Hi, Barbara. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to Jeff for me, please. Um, and, you know, lots of people who are like far away. But if St. Mary's is kind of your home church and community, uh, this is an important meeting. Yeah. So if you have some time to, to Zoom with us or phone in, um, it would be really well appreciated. Um, there's lots of decisions and things to think about and talk about. There are. There are. Uh, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're not familiar with St. Mary's, we give you a beautiful view, and the, sanct <laughs> the sanctuary is beautiful. Uh, there are other bits of the church that uh, have a few more problems, mm. and we have to deal with that. Yeah. So, uh, so we press on, and, but come, it won't be as easy doing it over Zoom as it would be face-to-face, -face, um, of course, but we'll, I will do my level best to um, chair it in a good way and um, yeah. let people have their voice, and hope you'll be able to hear and... You've chaired a few you. Zoom meetings I in the have, last yeah, months. Yeah, I really have. <laughs> Not church ones, but other ones, so you have experience. I really have. Um, and this afternoon at 4pm, 
Uh, there are just a couple of slots yet left. We're around about the 20, I think. Are we? We are. Oh, we had a flurry. We have had a flurry. Good. Uh, yeah, book early to avoid disappointment. So <laughs> That's if you, right. So if you haven't let yet, I, and uh, if you haven't yet let me know you're coming, you might want to just email me, actually, because we are getting a bit tight. Getting close to 25. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do a quick check of emails um, when I get home. Yeah, but don't be shy, because there's still some no, space. No, there are, but there are still spaces. Yeah. So, uh, and Neil Mancor will lead him. It's going to be similar... Um, similar format to last time except instead of blessing of candles and light at the start we're going to um, just have a general blessing for flowers and actually i did say to neil that um i would be glad if he gave thanks to the flower guild who have also faithfully come in week after week throughout the summer and uh, given stolen fresh cut flowers from james garden and <laughs> put them here and it's, it's, been, it's been beautiful it's been beautiful thank seems, you so much and it seems like a real representation of kind of creation and the gifts of the gifts of creation mm -hmm. That was it for me. That's it from you. It is. Very good. So have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And um, we sing our last hymn, The Dismissal. We do. Actually, can I say one more thing? You really can. You can even play in the background. For those, if you didn't see it, there's a film called The Seed, which um, it's an environment, a little five minute env environmental um, short short film. It was in the email this week. Marie's looking blank. That's because she didn't read her email. I always figure I know pretty much what's going on, yeah, but I'll well, read, I'll read. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's five minutes, it's really good. And um, it's actually, the executive producer is Richard Matthews, who I think is the brother of Leanne from the diocese. Oh. So there's a kind of, a, and it's actually, it's been sponsored a bit by the Environmental Committee of the Anglican Diocese of Montreal. Nice. So, and it, uh, but the main thing I want to say is, it's easy to despair at the moment, but, and, uh, but the, 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 the film is really about hope and despair. And it is easy to despair at the moment, but keep holding on to hope. Okay. And, and this is a song about creation and hope. It is. Now you can play it. And sing it. Maybe you can put the link on Facebook. To the, yeah, well, to the uh, yeah, well, video. Yeah, I'll do that too. Just also for yes. other people who don't get the email, maybe, or whatever. You shake the heavens and the mighty oceans. You set the stars out in the skies. The streams and rivers, the fields, trees, and mountains will fall by your mighty hand. Creation saves us all. Praises and praises, we must
May God the Father bless us, may Christ take care of us, and the Holy Ghost enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever, to the ages of ages. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.